All right. Well, let's get into this, huh? Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. <laughs> Hola, you amazing artists, and welcome to the Media Studio. I am happy to say that we just released a tour of the Sunflower House on our Adventure Channel, so if you'd like to go see that, go to the Adventure Channel. Today I was gonna record some thoughts that I had on uh, intellectual rhetoric that comes out of artists' mouths that came out of my mouth when I was younger, but I read some comments from the last video, and I want to address those. First, we have Anna Dreams Art, I do feel like an artist, but I also feel bad when I try to earn money from it since I've been told repeatedly that makes me selfish and attention seeking. But WTF, gotta live, you know. Thank you, Rafi. This is so inspiring. I'm gonna play it over and over for motivation. Thank you, Anna. Needless to say that this comment kind of uh, just burns a little fire under my skin. This is one of those things that people like to say and they don't think about. I remember at one point I was at a show and there was an artist that was across from me that had these beautiful pieces and he sat there and gave me this whole spiel about how like he doesn't want to take money for his pieces, he thinks that it should be free, and you know what, if that's how you feel about your art, that's fine. To sit there and call somebody selfish and attention seeking simply because you want to be paid whatever value it is that you deem that your art is worth is effing ridiculous. It doesn't work like that anywhere else. There aren't any trades out there where it's like, hey man, you really love doing this, you should do it for free. What kind of soul crushing monster would tell an artist that? Like, who are these people? We have an aspiring artist friend who makes beautiful pieces of art and she's considering doing her first live sale ever. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine telling her like, well, you know, that's really selfish of you. I'm gonna totally go to like a gourmet restaurant, enjoy the meal and be like, you just tell the chef that it's really selfish to ask us to pay the bill for this delicious meal. I think we should do that with everybody. Bills, utilities and stuff, we should be like, you know, it's just really selfish. Now on, we're not paying our bills because it's selfish for them to be charging us money. The fact of the matter is, Anna, anybody that's telling you this is full of beep. The next comment that I got was from artist Rebecca LS. What makes us professional artists? That's a topic that annoys people who feel some professional artists actually are not. One of the things I was trying to explain in the last video is that there's a bunch of labels and titles and things like that for uh, artists, for, for just about anything. It's almost like people need to label something in order to get a full understanding of it. When you talk about a professional artist, basically what that means is that is a professional, which means that that's what they do for their profession. And pretty much that's it. That's the only difference. If you want to add the word professional in front of artists, that's fine. Where that whole topic gets confusing is that we also use the word pro to signify when somebody's an expert at something. And really the term professional artist has nothing to do with being an expert. It just means that this is something that somebody has been doing for a long time possibly and making money at it. Yeah, and also I don't think you have to be like only earning money from your art. Like we know tons of professional artists uh, that have a corporate side hustle that mm -hmm. pays a portion of their bills. That's how they do. They're happy doing it or they're moving from that to full-time art and. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a profession, profession. You are a professional artist and that is your profession. And some people have two professions. So they might have a corporate side hustle and the profession of art. Mm -hmm. It just, it's... Mike Donovan says, I find it embarrassing to call myself an artist, especially if somebody were to ask me directly if I was one. The people who do call me artists are people whose opinion I value as to whether I'm a good person or not, but doesn't really seem to know anything about art and their opinion as to who is a good artist or who isn't wouldn't be worth anything to the world at large. <laughs> I get it. One of the biggest hurdles for a lot of people is to be able to call themselves something, uh, call themselves an artist, especially if they personally don't feel like they're an artist. It's the reason that I said it starts with you. It really does. It starts with you and it does not matter who calls you an artist or who doesn't call you an artist. You show that here beautifully by saying that people that do call you an artist, um, that they don't know enough, that their opinion doesn't matter. That's where you really need to investigate your mindset because what hierarchies do you have that makes one person's opinion more valid than someone else's opinion, especially in a subject that is as subjective as art? Mike, kudos for being a good person. 
I'm actually striving for that even more so than I'm striving to be known as an artist. Mm -hmm. And I hate calling you out on this mic, but really this comes down to your own insecurity and having to face that and realize, yes, Mike, if you create art, you are an artist, plain and simple. It doesn't matter whose opinion is telling you that you're an artist or telling you that you're not an artist. None of that matters. What really matters ultimately is what you think about yourself. The next up is Karen Zareski. This question is for Klee. How do you describe yourself and your profession? Are you an artist, an artistic crafter, or a crafter? In the world of jewelry, in your opinion, what is and are the differences? Well, Karen, uh, Klee's had this to say in the last video. I literally don't have time to argue semantics about what to call it. I realized I didn't actually physically say it in the last video, so I am an artist. I do call myself an artist, and to me, because I work in many different mediums, like a lot of us do, it um, doesn't really matter what medium I'm working in, whether it's jewelry or music or fiber arts or a sculpture or whatever, I'm using that medium to express something, so across the board, I'm an artist. Whether or not you're working on a craft or you're working on something else, like it just covers it all. Yeah, and honestly, it's easier to tell people when they ask me what I do to say artist instead of being like, well, I'm, I'm gonna list several things at you now. <laughs> now, if they wanna know, I'm happy to elaborate, but you know, artist. Recently, a whole research study was conducted about one guy who's an award-winning goldsmith, that's his career work. And all these people got together and argued and researched to determine whether this award-winning goldsmith was a crafter or an artist. And they determined, after much time, that he is in fact an artist because he produces highly original work and blah, 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 blah. And what he had to say about it was, I actually don't give a rip what <laughs> decision they came to because I just really enjoy making my stuff. Yeah. And that's that's how I feel. I'm like, I don't care. Call me whatever you want to call me. I think, and this might be an unpopular opinion, but ultimately it's up to the artist. Yeah. The next comment is from Learn Watercolor Painting. One person on YouTube described me as an a-hole who can paint. I'm not sure how to take that. Perhaps it means I'm a great artist, but not much of a human being, but I think I'm okay with that. Well, that is brilliant. <laughs> People are going to call you whatever they're going to call you, and Ultimately, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, take the compliment or the half compliment or whatever. I mean, it's better than being called an a-hole who can't paint. Yeah. And by the way, I'm sure you're not an a-hole. We've been called a-holes plenty of times. Oh, we've we've been called way more than that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, take, take the compliment. It's a great one. Next up, we got a comment from Mike Davis. Yes, I'm an artist of many creative activities, but the time and effort it will take to begin selling something again is a bummer. And I prefer to just keep creating and not have to sell, just share. Well, Mike, my opinion is quite different than a lot of the rhetoric that's out there. When it comes to your art and selling your art, really the biggest role that you have is to share it with people, to share it with the world, because essentially your art is gonna sell itself. I think a lot of people are under the misconception and I've heard a lot of people say here that you gotta close the sale and stuff like that. And when it comes to art, in all honesty, the art sells itself before the person even approaches. Ooh, that term, closing the sale. I've always disliked it. For me, it's not at all about closing a sale. It's about opening a door. Ooh, I like that. Open the door for people to enjoy your art. I wouldn't worry so much about selling your art. I would just ask myself, how much am I sharing my art out there? Am I giving people the opportunity to buy my art if they want it? and really take a look at the avenues that you're taking. And if your answer is no, then, you know, then, then you're not putting it out there enough. The next comment is from Becky Webb. I'm not earning money currently with my art, so it was nice to hear that earning money isn't a precursor to being an artist. No, no, earning money is not a precursor to being an artist. That's like saying that Stephen King wasn't an author before he got published. It's, it's just, that's ridiculous. That's like saying that any of the great artists or authors or creatives of their time, like before they made their first amount of money, that they weren't 
an artist or an author before that happened because they certainly were putting in the time and the blood, sweat, and tears to get there. Can you imagine telling, uh, well, actually, I think people did tell Andy Warhol that he wasn't an artist uh -huh. up to a certain point, and yeah. then he was laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah, exactly. They did the same thing, you know, Stephen King. You had yep. mentioned Stephen King, mm -hmm. and Stephen King, uh, for the longest time, there was one point where he couldn't afford uh, medicine for his kids because he was so broke because he wasn't published. And at that point, he was still writing, and I'm like, yeah, that, that to me makes the person more of an artist and more of an author if like right from the get-go they have to stick with this thing in order in order for it to happen and they're not getting anything in return they're I'm like, putting in this the work yeah so. if you're not making money and you're still working on art you are absolutely an artist you are an artist there's a lot of there is so much rhetoric out there and really just don't worry about the rhetoric next comment comes from christine h I got called a failed artist by a psychiatrist the other week when I told him I didn't make a lot of money from my work. Then for an extra punch, he said most artists were failures for this reason. I don't even know where to begin to unpack this. I've been telling myself all week that he's a failed psychiatrist. Yes, he is a failed psych. That is the stupidest comment that I've ever heard. I, I am honestly speechless at this one. Like, I can't imagine being in that situation as a psychiatrist aren't you supposed to kind of stay away from like juvenile name calling and like jumping to conclusions and labeling right off the bat like it's, it's just it's not a good move i you know if i was a psychiatrist and i was like well you know you're a failure like <laughs> my psychiatry work here is done Shut that up is a good day at work right there and finally the last comment is from tim daniel calling myself an artist is easy and natural specifying what type of artist i am is almost impossible all right tim i think that you've actually posted a few comments because you like doing um a plethora of things and i get that because i love doing a plethora of things the thing about it is that i've never really been too concerned about labels and i know that there's a lot of information out there that says you know be specific you want to uh only do one thing because you don't want to confuse your audience and blah 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 and all that stuff really when it comes down to it and people ask me what i do i let them know that i'm an artist it's kind of like the layers of conversation right so somebody asked me uh what do you do and my answer is i'm an artist I dare you to question me. It's on my schedule. See you guys. And then if they're curious further, then I might say, oh, I'm a multimedia artist because I do several things. And if they're still curious and they haven't pieced out because they're not interested in art conversations, then I would elaborate and explain, well, I do music and jewelry and some sculpture and some fabric arts. And, you know, like yeah. then I would elaborate on the types of things. But it's kind of like, here's a bit Here's a bit, depending on how much you want to hear, but multimedia is an easy, like, descriptive term for someone who does a lot of things. Yeah, and I just throw it up at them. I'm like, I do <laughs> For a while there, Tim, I called myself a multimedium artist. That's basically what I called myself. I am a multi, I, I work in several different mediums. And that made it easier for me in the beginning when I was a little bit more insecure about what to call myself and stuff. So you could definitely take that uh, multimedium. I'm a multimedia artist. I do a little bit of everything. By the way, all of you guys, we love reading your comments. Unfortunately, um, we've been getting a lot of comments, so we don't get the chance to respond a lot, but we do definitely read the comments. Just want to let you know, we freaking adore your... A lot of times we're just cracking up out loud because honestly, the people that follow us are some of the most creative, humorous, awesome human beings out there. And other than that, I'm curious to know uh, any of you guys, if you guys have any responses for any of the comments that were listed in this video, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. I'm about to end this video. You want to say goodbye to all our amazing peeps out there? I thought these comments were really pretty awesome yes. and interesting. You guys are amazing. We love your comments and your questions. Thank you and keep them coming and good day. And thank you so much for watching you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this, you could click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. I will talk to you guys later. Adios.